Look at this huge pile of leaves and branches and stuff. You can't barely even see my house back there. I, I would like to tell you that I cut all that stuff down, but I didn't. Normally, that would have been uh, my project. But since I've had uh, eye surgery, the doctor has limited me greatly. I can't do physical labor, I can't exercise, I can't jump, I can't do, I can't lift anything. I mean, there's, I can't, there's a lot of things I can't do. So it pained me to pay someone, I had to pay somebody to cut all that stuff down. You see my dogs back there? I had to pay somebody to cut everything down. Three, it took three men to cut down that dead tree and the weeds and all that stuff and the big vine. But back in the day when I did yard work, I can remember I was out there and I was sweating and it was hot and I just, I, I but, but I enjoyed it. Like right now, I totally wish I could do that. And, and I'm out there and I'm, and then my sweet wife stands right here at, at this door and she calls my name and I come over to the door and she's holding this. There is nothing more refreshing <laughs> than a glass of iced tea, cold. Did I say iced tea? Lemonade, cold lemonade on a hot day when you've been working and sweating. <clears throat> and I just stood there and drank it, thought about how much I love my wife. And that reminds me of our passage today. We're in Acts chapter 3 as we continue the New Testament challenge, uh, taking one chapter a day. And today, Acts chapter 3. In a minute, you're going to see how my lemonade uh, <laughs> uh, is a perfect example of what we're reading today. So, uh, we start with Peter and John going to the temple at the hour of prayer. It's always a good idea uh, to pray. I'm waving at a neighbor. Uh, and there's a person there who's been lame from his mother's womb, it says. And they would carry him along and and uh, bring him to the temple where he would beg. Uh, remember, Luke, who wrote the book of Acts, was a physician. And so he was always fascinated uh, by, by healings. Uh, lately, I've been very interested in healings as well, just because I have needed one. And so it's, it's interesting how when you read the scripture, you start thinking, yeah, I need that. It's not my legs, it's my eye, but I, I, I could use some healing. And so Peter and John come up on this guy, lame from a birth, and he's begging and he's looking, oh, I'm, I'm going to get something from these guys. But instead, Peter says, silver and gold have we none, but what we do have, we give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And the guy stands oh no i'm gonna read it to you uh i've got a bible here and 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 the guy uh it, it says seizing him by the right hand they raised him up immediately his feet and ankles were strengthened again luke the physician he 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 pays attention to that immediately his feet and ankles are strengthened and then it says with a leap he stood upright and he's walking and leaping and praising god uh, if you have never walked in your life, I suppose now that you have legs, you want to try them out. He is leaping. He is jumping. Oh, see, I almost got up and, and jumped. That's, that's what I cannot do. He's leaping. He's jumping. This is not a gradual healing. When God heals you, you are healed. He's, <laughs> he's jumping all over the place. Uh, people are filled with wonder and amazement. Then verse 11 says, while he was clinging to Peter and John, I, I think you would too. Just like hanging on to him. Can you picture it? It says all the people ran to them. So, so now Peter has an audience. He's thinking, well, I've got an audience. I may as well preach. I got an audience. Look, my little dog, Charlie. Come here, Charlie. Come on. Okay, just picture, he's running to me because I was healed and he wants to celebrate. My dog Bridget won't come in unless I call her. 
So he's preaching now. In verse 13, he says, he, t he starts talking about Jesus. Hey, Peter is not the scared disciple who denied the Lord three times. Not anymore. Uh, Peter talks about Jesus, the one whom you delivered up and disowned. Then verse 14, you disown the holy and righteous one and ask for a murderer to be granted to you instead. Remember, that would be Barabbas. You chose Barabbas and, and killed Jesus. You, verse 15, you put to death the prince of life, the one whom God raised from the dead, a fact to which we are witnesses. Now, there's a little compassion comes into at verse 17. Now, brethren, I know that you just acted in ignorance. You didn't know any better. And so then he's preached the gospel. He said, we're all sinners. In fact, you killed Jesus. But guess what? Uh, if you're listening to me, you killed Jesus too. I killed Jesus. It was our sins that put him on the cross. But you cannot keep the prince of life dead. God raised him from the dead. And then listen, here, here's the invitation. Verse 19, he says, repent, therefore. Now, anytime you hear the word repent, you're thinking evangelists, sweating, screaming, veins popping in his forehead. You repent, you no good, lousy sinners. Repent, repent, <laughs> grinding your teeth. Repent, you, you know better, you should know better. Repent. Doesn't repentance seem like a negative thing? It, it's the most positive thing, perhaps, in the Bible. Because look at what he says in verse 19. What happens when we repent? Repent that your sins may be wiped away, and times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Remember, remember, remember. <laughs> Nothing more refreshing than a cold glass of lemonade when you really need it. Nothing more refreshing than repentance. It's not a negative thing. It's, it's the most beautiful, positive thing in the world. There's nothing like being at, at peace with God, being right with God, having turned from your sins and experienced forgiveness. It will refresh you. It will fill you with joy and hope and purpose. It will change your life. It'll make you want to get up in the morning. I, repentance is it's refreshing. It's, it's what some of you are missing in your life right now. There might be some sin, something you're holding on to. And and until you let it go, you think you can't let it go. You can't live without it. Until you let it go, you'll never have joy. There'll never be that, that freshness that you need. And, and, and what else did he say would happen? Your sins would be wiped away. Uh, one translation, said, the King James says, blotted out. Uh, erased. Uh, th those are good translations. Uh, let me give you an example. I, I got a legal pad here and I wrote the word sin. But what this verse means is when you repent, God, he doesn't just, he doesn't just like, you know, scratch it out or no matter how much I scratch, you still see the word. The sin, it's still there. God, through the blood of his son, he takes your sin and he, he eliminates it. He wipes it away. Not only, maybe they'll come over and listen to me. I have neighbors walking by. Not only will you be refreshed, your sins, whatever you've committed, God forgives he forgets, he erases, blots it out, wipes it away, uh, presses the delete key, uh, burns the microfilm, throws it in the ocean and posts a no fishing sign. God forgives forever and then doesn't even remember it anymore. <sighs> That's pretty refreshing. Have a great day, church.